This is Day to Day with St. Joseph. And in the book, we're in day 18th. The date on the calendar is, is March the 4th, Thursday. Hey, we have done 28 days so far of programs. Isn't that great? So St. Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. That's what's in day 18 in the book. On the Consecration of St. Joseph book. We'll be going back in there today. And we pray, O oh Lord, as we think about prudence, we think about Joseph always uh, seeking your will, seeking the path, seeking to be wise, seeking to make the good and just decision the day to day in his life. Thank you for his great example that we should do the same. Amen. In this book, we're going through uh, the Consecration of St. Joseph. Father Calloway leads us to day 18 and the line in the Litany of St. Joseph, Joseph, most prudent, pray for us. So most prudent of the saints. Well, I think uh, he finds that Blessed William Joseph Shaman, I will say, well, the one who raises Jesus and cares for Mary needed a lot of direction from God, a lot of guidance, and that requires then growing in prudence. So he gives them the gold star, Joseph, for being prudent. Uh, and we have other saints that also would ask you to go forth in prudence. Hey, hey today's March the 4th. Go forth on the 4th in prudence with St. Joseph. Today's the feast of uh, Saint Casimir of Poland, great, great Polish saint, and that saint, if you know his background, he had to practice a lot of prudence, and he had, he had uh, worldly decisions to make all the time that was hard and affected a lot of people, but he also was making decisions to grow as a Christian and to spread the faith. Saint Casimir is a hero to Polish Catholics and. Baltimore is a beautiful church called St. Casimir's in Canton. The Polish uh, Catholics that came first to the port of Baltimore, responsible for that parish and a presence in Baltimore. Uh, and they salute him as a man that's prudent. So another saint that's prudent is the saint from yesterday on the calendar, March 3rd, Catherine Drexel. She was prudent in discerning a vocation and it was hard because she was rich and she had she was an heir to a lot of money and she decided that there was a real lack in the church for service to black catholics black americans and native american native american catholics so she decided to take her fortune and and use it to reach that part of the church and boy what a great uh, vocation that was a recent saint, she died in 1955. And so I know people who are directly affected by that saint and were blessed. But she was prudent in seeing a need. And even today now in 2021, we know that there's still a great need uh, for both of those categories in the church. And it's been in the news. So prudence, what's it say? The catechism? It's the virtue that disposes practical reason to discern our true good in every circumstance and to choose the right means of achieving it. So, yeah, finding our true good. So you and I, we have our, we have our life to live. We have to make choices every day. And it all strings together in a life of choices where we're seeking to do the true good or the highest good in our life, trying to let goodness you know, work through us. So not just good St. Joseph, but but good St. John Barry, good St. You. And the right means, of course, is important too. And these are the things that require time where you think, you reason, you pray, you get good counsel, you find what uh, the church says, okay, what the Bible says, okay, these are these are all part of of acting in prudence. We talked about it in the early days of, of this book and the Holy Spirit chapter. The Holy Spirit um, 
brings prudence to us, the charioteer of all the virtues. That having engaged your heavenly aid, that we may respond and offer our faith, work, and love with all homage and thanksgiving to the Heavenly Father. Amen. Prudence. So deciding things well, choosing, really uh, willing to, uh, to put our will with God's to say, I'm going to stop and I'm going to try to let you communicate, Lord, your will to me because uh, the choices I have to make today, I, I want them to glorify you. So Joseph, we call him most prudent because he had the biggest job on his hands, right? <laughs> he had to be the head of the Holy Family. He had to look after Mary. He had to look after Jesus. And he had to lead lead them. And so many decisions had to be made. And so he took it to prayer. And he took in all the other things that you and I still have to take in. We have to take in past experience. We have to take in good counsel that comes from others. We have to take in the scriptures and what it's taught us. Okay? We have to take in just patient quiet, just giving God an avenue into our thoughts and uh, our prayers of softening our will to God's will. Remember Jesus said, thy will be done. To pray that. Well, we, you know, Joseph certainly understood these lessons and he's a model to us. And so, I think of on the calendar today, uh, March the 4th, is St. Casimir. He is a person that had a practice prudence too, like Joseph. Casimir was king of Poland, and he managed to become a saint while also becoming king. That's, that's a difficult thing. <laughs> Not too many of those. And he influenced so many Polish Catholics down through history that here in Baltimore, I think of St. Casimir's Parish and the many Polish Catholics who came to the port of Baltimore and, and got that parish going, as well as another one in Fells Point. And today, well, it's a beautiful, beautiful church, although the Polish uh, Catholic Americans have kind of spread out uh, and don't just live centered there right now. Uh, they, they still have this beautiful church there, and they certainly celebrate St. Casimir and we pray for his help. And St. Catherine Drexel, I think, she was on the calendar yesterday. And, you know, she comes more from the Philadelphia region. Uh, she lived up to 1955. Um, what she was prudent about was to learn from her parents a life of charity. And then to realize that as a single and being the heiress to lots of money, that she could make a, an outstanding difference to America with what she would do with it. And she decided to give it to efforts to black and native American ministries for the church, uh, an underserved community. And uh, she did some amazing things. Uh, you should check her life out if you've never heard of it. Uh, but there's a great parish named after her too in Frederick, just north of Frederick, another beautiful church. And now we go to the lesson of prudence. So prudence is the virtue which disposes practical reason to discern our true good in every circumstance and to choose the right means of achieving it. So Casimir, Catherine, Joseph, you and I, we have a true good. We have uh, opportunities in front of us. And with reason, we need to courageously step out and live those choices out. Uh, prudence is the charioteer of the tr virtues, so says the Catechism. And it's one of the four cardinal virtues, but it really is the one that we start off with. And so today when we think of Joseph, we think uh, that we need to live in his model to not be too hasty in choices we make and not to rely too much on just our own self-will but to always invite the, the will of God, the mind of God, the mind of Christ Jesus <clears throat> into how we're living and to say, how am I pleasing God? How am I? And in the back of your book, you have the seven joys, seven sorrows of Joseph, uh, kind of matching ones up to Mary. Some are more familiar with the seven sorrows of Mary, especially my last parish. Uh, 
it seems like Our Lady brought, introduced that into our parish and uh, it helped some people's faith a lot. Seven Joys, Seven Sorrows of Joseph shows that when we are prudent, we make our choices, that uh, sometimes it brings great joys, um, but sometimes it brings sorrows because there's a cost of discipleship of following the Lord, and sometimes it uh, brings persecution even. But uh, we got to be willing to, to make these choices too. It's not just for pleasure and comfort. It's to the uh, pleasure of God, the service of God, why we do things. I have the church in the back there, a uh, little model of a church. Just remind us too that the church is a storehouse of much wisdom and as, uh, helps people make very prudent decisions. We uh, work together and we work together as a church back to the beginning. And we look at the ways God has uh, worked in us and shown us the way. And so we have uh, collectively found uh, many common truths to live. And it's very important to follow that. I quoted the Catechism today as an example of, of a, a rich source of, of, uh, of truth for us to live. Uh, Joseph had the entire Old Testament to work with. And I think sometimes uh, we underestimate what he knew of that when he's making his judgments. But especially he understood there was a God of the covenant behind everything, trying to gather a people Israel. And now the Messiah has come and tried to gather a people of all the tribes and peoples of the earth who would believe to become one in him. And to those who, uh, who choose wisely, eternal life awaits them. And when God comes, when we come to see God and God comes to greet us, he's going to say, uh, you made a good choice. You chose me.